Hello, everybody. My name's Peter Bonnell. I'm the senior curator at Quad and Format as well. Today, I have the huge pleasure of welcoming the artist Kensuke Koike. And Kensuke is joining us all the way from Tokyo and Japan today. I'm in Derby in the UK. So hello, Kensuke. How are you? I'm fine. Thank you. It's so wonderful to be able to do this recording with you. And I know you normally live in and work in Venice in Italy and you weren't able to get back. Um, so thankfully you're, you're safe and well and anybody watching this film I hope they're safe and well too. Today we're going to go and look at your one of the most glorious exhibitions I've ever had the pleasure to work on, Happy Ending, and we'll talk about the reasons for that title which I think uh, say uh, as much about you as this optimistic cheerful person as much as how you've worked with those photographs. Well Happy Ending was a solo exhibition by you in Quad Gallery 2 during Format 19 last year. And the overarching themes of Format 19 were Forever Now, with the use of archives, repurposing archives, the use of images, using them again, looking towards the future and looking uh, towards the past. But today I'm starting this, this talk in Quad's foyer area. And what we're going to do with our talk is use this 3D virtual exhibition tour produced by V21 Art Space, and it's an interactive scan, and there'll be links to this scan alongside this tour. These white circles on the floor, you can move to them to move in and out of the scan, and we'll have some footage of your wonderful Instagram videos. Afterwards, after this talk, you can go to Instagram, type in Kinsuke Koike, uh, and get this amazing stream of films and images uh, and links to all your other works uh, on that uh, platform. So happy endings, Kensuke. We start in the quad reception area just outside the gallery. Uh, you can see your exhibition through the window here. You can see the other group exhibition curated by Tim Clark and Louise Fedotov clements who Louise directs Format Festival. This is a show called uh, Mutable Multiple. Your exhibition in Quad Gallery 2. But we start in the foyer and we have a selection of your Instagram films. Um, you make sculptural objects, you work with archive photographs, you make short films that you show on Instagram. You, uh, I believe you're now making clothing, is that correct? Yeah. Uh, and you can find them on the links to the Instagram page too. So we will go into the main space in a moment and explain in more detail where the images came from. But can we talk a little bit about uh, this entrance image and what you intended for it? What was the uh, intention of the uh, hand mirrored uh, on this side of the glass? Yeah, as an image, it came from the archive, always from the WW Winter, which I chose. And I use always my hands in my Instagram video, so I wanted to put the hands of someone in this case to make a connection between the my my new videos and the archive image. So uh, it's a kind of tran transition from old vintage images to my new approach of working. It, it works so incredibly well because it had this illusion of the gallery being reflected on the wall in the in the resource area space, almost as if the glass wasn't quite there, if that made sense. It, it gave this odd illusion, but it also did draw you straight into the space, exactly as you said. Can I ask briefly about the Instagram films as well? They are very simply done, and a lot of your work, like all great artwork, has a very simple approach. You, uh, we'll talk a little bit how you approach these photographs, these archive images with such reverence in a moment. But with the Instagram films, were they just ways for you to make the images come alive? So I make these videos from my postcards archive, but I choose randomly the images. And because I, I think I can do everything I want from it, each image I own. So it's not so important which image I choose to make a new work. I wanted to give some uh, color 
Pare in this show because it's quite vintage taste and black and white. Yeah, these videos of Instagram is a kind of my idea uh, sketches. So uh, it's quite small in the size, but I think always they have great possibilities and they have uh, they could be a big installation or something something in other format. So uh, yeah, I wanted to show uh, with these videos that I I can make many many ideas and many possibilities from simple images, uh, abandoned images. That's that was my idea. They are just mesmerizing to watch these Instagram films. I want to talk about humor. There's so many questions that I have for you as an artist because your practice, as I say, has this simple way of working, but it's, it's deceptively simple. But the, the fun, the humor, the reverence, the uh, understanding of an object is so, so much part of your practice. So what I'd like to do is go into the quad main gallery space and we're going to just take a, uh, a detour here to the right. And you can see the text here about your exhibition with the title Happy Ending. Oh. And I wanted to just do a little quote um, ab uh, about your ethos for this exhibition I thought was wonderful. And I've written it down here, actually. Well, here we come into the main exhibition. And this is the sort of viewpoint that I took when I came into the exhibition. And I know it was very specific uh, to how you laid out the exhibition, too. Actually, can you, can you talk just briefly about that, how you seem to have this very particular viewpoint for people to look at in the exhibition space? Yeah, I, uh, I chose these images and I didn't remove anything. So it was always as, uh, as I did as my uh, previous works with a concept of no more and no less. So I didn't uh, remove uh, the part I removed, I put on the wall and the spider woman in, in you see is always present uh, every, every part. So I wanted to put uh, at least one point, like a viewpoint to show, to see everything uh, at once. All images are present and you can, you can imagine uh, how I mix only five images and what I, what I did from five images. It was such a, a carefully crafted exhibition that you could see everything. Uh, in... six, yeah, six images, sorry. <laughs> yes, I was, I was about to say, no, no, that, that's easy done. I, I always miscount things. Um, but you, <laughs> you were, um, you, it was such an intricately crafted exhibition. Even the grey walls at the back were very specific. The, the black cloth to deflect the light. You work with our amazing tech team and we work together, you and I, to to generate the, the layout for this exhibition. You you can see the individual components, but the whole thing together, and then your eyes drawn, and you could also walk around these fabulous fabrications that were made by our good friend and collaborator, Matt Tully, who worked with you directly on uh, producing uh, the works too. You mentioned it a moment ago. These are all images from the archives of W.W. W. Winter, a photography studio that had its origins in Derby around 1852, and it's still a working practice and studio. And we were able to bring you over from when you came over from Venice, actually, and you visited Winter. And down in the basement, they actually excavated the, the basement area and found all these glass plate negatives from the 1880s. These are all images from the 1880s. Um, and you were able to go through elements of the collection and select, as you say, the images that you, you wanted. Can you talk a bit, a little bit more about what drew you to these particular images? Uh, because you take your photographs from flea markets, from secondhand stores, um, and these weren't images that you were able to directly cut into. We can, we'll talk about the cutting in a minute as well. Yeah, I wanted to use uh, absolutely the images from the double double winter because uh, images is, came from uh, that part of, of, of city. So it's part of the history. For me, it was no sense to bring my works 
from my choice uh, because I use always in the images I I found in North Italy where I live. Bringing the images from Italy not so important for for this exhibition, so I wanted to use uh, images from the area. And these images, uh, yeah, in some some way, I caught some uh, as a character, uh, as a muscle muscle guy or, or gentle gentle woman or, or as a people. I really wanted to to use them and divide the images to today. And I, I chose uh, the images one one by one, uh, and, and thinking what to do with each image, because uh, in some some case I couldn't do any uh, any other job without using these images. Because in case of the three heads people, I couldn't do any anything with uh, without the help of the that particular image so uh, each image i chose i uh, was in some way uh, they captured my heart and i wanted to uh, to give my honor and the honor to the photographer and honor to the history of the place and uh, and to get making together uh, a great show and that's what my my point of view is like a union union of the history and my my actual doing. Uh, that is so eloquently put. I was very moved actually, um, but also really energized by this exhibition. And I remember asking you why you wanted to call it Happy Ending, and your response was one of the most one of the loveliest responses I've ever had from an, from an artist, and, and I'm going to quote you now. Uh, I asked you, why happy ending, Kintsuke? And you said, you're going to give, your, your intention was to give these images a new life, a new story, and now a new result, a new purpose. And that was, that's your, your ethos, isn't it? Your whole approach, or one of your main approaches to working with these images is to as you've said already, you, you approach them with such reverence and care and understanding. The thing is, these images, the spider, the three-headed um, image uh, on the pedestal there, and the strong man, you know, looks like a, a cartoon character. These are not poking fun or making fun of people. As you say, these are just ways to bring them alive, to breathe new life into the images, isn't it? Yeah. Yes, uh, the most important thing is uh, looking the works. Uh, you are thinking again the, that people were was exist. So I think I I think if I didn't make these works, of course nobody were giving any more attention to these people. So the most important thing is uh, make new work and uh, give new life and uh, think also about these people uh, really existed and yeah and it, it that was uh meaning of the happy ending because the happy ending means uh, if we don't forget about that people uh, it, they always live in our heart and it's very good for us to remember I also recall this fantastic image, image here of this very noble looking gentleman. And again, just to reiterate to people listening, and as you've mentioned before, these are all likely residents of Derby or Derbyshire. So very local, very much about the, the, the place that, you, that you've come to here in the UK. And again, this reverential approach. But also you, you, you like the fun that, that people could put their heads through this image here uh, on the shoulder of this this man. But again, it was as if you were breathing new life into this old, wonderful old image. And then you took these very deliberate cuts and produced this wonderful smiley face on the wall. And I would go down into the gallery every day and go into your exhibition <laughs> just, just to give myself a, a tonic um, and to to feel so much better. 
can I ask a question now about your your way of working or a couple of questions actually you have produced these cutouts before on a slightly smaller scale what was your intention for for, for making them as as these are in steel yeah I make always a, a mock-up and the prototypes uh, because it's not a random cut but I always think about uh, detail so I'm, I'm I don't I don't make only make uh, make funny <laughs> or fun stuff with uh, image because I respect all these people so I want to give a precise uh, precise work and uh, very thought about thought for and making them into these very uh, heavy and they they looked and felt heavy but they added to even more to the substance although I would argue that very much so and I'm sure many people would agree that your works even the archive images that you take are, are still incredibly substantial images in their own right as well just as substantial as these steel images and we we still have them at quad and we are still considering and, and we and, and talking to you about showing them and sharing them with other people as well, uh, other galleries um, around the country and abroad too, once this pandemic is over, of course. And <laughs> finally today, what I'd like to do is talk just a little bit more about, about your process. You, you still, even working digitally on the computer, you had to be very precise and very careful about the cuts that you made. And the cut, the cutting into the image is so immensely crucial to your work. But can you tell me just about how you how you prepare for for cutting the actual archive images? What do you do to get to that stage where you're ready to actually cut into the image? The digital images or analog uh, images is not so important for me. It only depends on what what the output will be. So uh, usually uh, for the vintage images. Of course, I have only one and only one chance to cut if I want to cut the original, of course. Uh, so usually I scan it and uh, make a prototype, the facsimile of the same uh, same image and, and cut and cut. And uh, I, yeah, I always do with a manual and the digital mixing uh, both technique because uh, digitally, you can only approach uh, by layers, so you cannot see through the 3D point of view. Because if I cut with scissors or cutter, you can mix the layer, so uh, you can make them pop up. Or because the pop-up image, you cannot think so easily with uh, digital images. So for me, it's very important to use my hands and see see and the try uh, with with the paper and the paper praying and uh, what can I apply, apply the image and the, these 3D structures. The, the time that you spend in your studio, it's almost as if you meditate in front of the images. And I've asked, when we did, when we did an actual live gallery tour last year, I was intrigued and fascinated by this this uh, approach that you have that you stop drinking coffee i think before you get ah, yeah. <laughs> i don't drink coffee one day before i cut the uh, images of course because i don't i don't like that maybe my hand hands could shake and <laughs> That will give me a little mistake, and I cannot probe any any small mistake to make a precise work. So the physical condition is very important because if I cut only one the vintage original images, I must be super prepared in every thing. So physically or mentally or so everything. So. It's always, yeah, the same. Often I am as fascinated by the work of an artist and equally fascinated by the ways of working and your ways of working, your process is just, it's this 
great, almost heroic effort that you have as an artist. So I think what we'll do now, I'll start to wrap up this talk, Konsuke. And I have to say, I was looking at your Instagram site again today, and at the top of the explanation, it says alchemist. And you certainly are. It was just a, a pleasure to work with you on this exhibition, uh, a pleasure for us to... Um, be able to work with an artist with such a huge reach globally, making such great artworks. Um, I'm going to start finish now, Kintsuke, with a few thank yous. I'd like to uh, thank Arts Council England, who funds so much of Quad's work and Format's work as well, Format International Photography Festival, Derby City Council also, University of Derby, who partner Format every iteration of the festival and bring so many, much funds and logistical support. Thank you again to V21 Art Space. And Kensuke, all the way from Tokyo today, myself and Derby, thank you so much for doing this talk with me today. It's an absolute pleasure to talk to you again. Stay safe and well, um, and <laughs> I'll see you again soon, I hope. Yeah, thank, thank you, Peter. <laughs>